and thank you for joining us. My name is Rob Gilmore. I'm the Director of Campus Experience in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions here at Sacred Heart University. We're coming at you live from the Center for Healthcare Education here at Sacred Heart. Uh, it is a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, we certainly want to thank you all uh, for your patience over the last couple of days as we are finally being able to come uh, to you as we celebrate the class of 2024 in our first live chat of this admitted student season, uh, celebrating the class, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, College of Health Professions uh, students. Uh, over the next uh, few days and weeks, our office is going to be rapidly, uh, rapidly uh, communicating to you about upcoming chats uh, on all different <coughs> subjects as we look to engage you uh, in this critical time as we are just 46 days away from May 1st, which is the National Deposit Deadline. It is our hope and it is our mission to make sure that all students accepted to the Sacred Heart class of 2024 will get as much information provided to them over the next few weeks. Our staff and our students here at the university are willing to be engaged with you in every sort of virtual function that we can and uh, we are looking forward to all the new possibilities that we have to interact with all of you and your parents and your families over the next few weeks. To welcome you on behalf of our admissions staff and to give you an overview about the admissions uh, class for the class of 2024, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, uh, actually my boss, uh, <laughs> uh, but my colleague and a fellow alumnus from mine of the class of 2007, Pam Pillow. Pam. Thank you so much, Rob. And thank you all for joining us this, this morning. Um, we would have loved to have welcomed you in person, but this will have to do for now. I want to offer my sincere congratulations to all of you and your families on your admission to Sacred Heart University. We have had our largest applicant pool ever and our most qualified applicant pool. Those of you who have been admitted to the College of Health Professions have submitted applications with the average GPA of a 3.7, test scores of over a 1220, and at least 10 or more honors courses on average. So you are extremely qualified. We look forward to welcoming you here at Sacred Heart. I hope we can do so on campus soon, um, but we do have a, a great virtual event planned for you today, um, representation from the college here, and uh, we look forward to answering your questions this morning. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, split this up in uh, a couple different sections today so that we can get as many questions to you as possible. Uh, we are joined by uh, faculty uh, from the College of Health Professions here at Sacred Heart as well as the Dean of the College of Health Professions. We're going to have them introduce themselves to you at this moment uh, and then we will break off into small sections so we can get those questions answered. What we're going to ask you to do is just continue to send in as many questions as possible and then we will get them into the group chat so you can see what questions are being asked and we will answer as many as we can uh, before we wrap up just around noon. Uh, so we're going to start down here with Kristen who's going to introduce them herself and then we'll snake through so you can get to see everybody who's with us today. Thank you, Rob. Good morning. My name is Kristen Schweizer. I'm a clinical assistant professor and associate director of clinical education in the physical therapy program here and welcome to Sacred Heart. First off, congratulations on being admitted to Sacred Heart. I'm Dr. Matthew Moran, uh, director of the undergraduate exercise science program and I head up biomechanical testing in our Pioneer Performance Center. Congratulations again to everybody. My name is Dr. Sharon McCluskey. I am the Interim Chair and Program Director of the Occupational Therapy Program. Uh, I'm also a Clinical Assistant Professor. And good morning and congratulations. We look forward to seeing you in September. My name is Dr. Maura Everson and I'm the Dean of the College of Health Professions and a Professor in Physical Therapy and Public Health. Good morning. My name is Marta Gordkowska. I'm a Clinical Assistant Professor in Speech-Language Pathology. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Wingert. I'm an academic advisor in our health science program. And I'm Pam Pillow, Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions. So we'd like you to send as many questions in as possible. We are going to try to get through them as quickly as possible. Uh, but before we start taking those questions, I would like to offer uh, a quick moment for the Dean of the College of Health Professions, Dr. Moore Everson, to introduce um, the, uh, the college and to give her welcome on behalf of all the faculty of the, of the college. Thank you, Rob. Yes, welcome to the College of Health Professions. We are so excited that you are joining us uh, very shortly. This is a wonderful environment to um, learn and to uh, experience uh, clinical professions. We have a multitude of professions here at the college, um, and each of ours are very both clinically rich and very uh, technology oriented. 
One of the reasons I came to Sacred Heart was because of the wonderful teaching faculty within the institution, the fact that Sacred Heart is so progressive in their technological advancements for teaching, which will certainly help us lead the way in the uh, delivery of healthcare uh, in the future. Um, all of our programs are um, quite integrated. We have a very strong emphasis on interprofessional education, and we all know that team care and the medical professions is so important to ensure quality care. So again, I look forward to seeing you very shortly. All right. Uh, and just to give you a quick rundown uh, about our programs here within the College of Health Professions, the College of Health Professions offers three undergraduate programs in health science, exercise science, and communication disorders, and graduate programs in athletic training, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, healthcare informatics, physician assistant, and public health. Uh, those uh, programs can be viewed on our website at any time with full information geared to classes that you'll be taking and information about uh, clinical instruction uh, and classroom instruction. Uh, but we are now going to take your questions so we can get a little bit more information to you at this time. And the first question uh, that we're going to be going to right now is actually about our occupational therapy program. And the question coming in today, is, the first question today is, uh, in students in the accelerated 3 plus 2 occupational therapy program, will they be required to take summer and or winter intercession courses? So the 3 plus 2 program uh, will require students to um, sign up for either winter or summer um, because in terms of academic preparedness, um, one needs to have had all of the coursework done. Um, the 3 plus 2 program um, is a wonderful opportunity to enter our program early um, and yes, as I said, you will have to work a little more in terms of your workload over the summer or the winter breaks. Does anybody else want to comment on accelerated options here and what uh, that may look like for some students as they are gearing up going into their freshman year? Um, I think I might just add that with the accelerated programs, you have the opportunity of actually saving a year of time, yes. uh, which is very important now in this uh, financial situation. But the other piece is that we have so many clubs and opportunities for students to be engaged. We have such a rich campus life that I think that you will be very happy that you have the opportunity to be on campus as much as you are. Okay. Uh -huh. um, question coming in now uh, for advisement going into your uh, freshman year, uh, and that is uh, for your freshman year, fall semester, how are your classes selected for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, for your first semester, unfortunately, you're not given the choice on the specific classes, so you don't get to pick them out. However, you do fill out a form. It's called Easy Navi Easy, you know? In Navigator. Yes. Easy Navigator. Navigator. Yeah. So it's a survey that you put all your information in, and then um, we, our team, then builds your schedule based on that. So what I would recommend is that you put all these, all the information as much as possible, into that survey. That way, we're able to. Um, build a schedule that kind of fits with you, whether you're in sports or you want clubs or um, if you've brought in any courses that you transferred in, just so um, we're able to give you a better schedule for the fall semester. And after your fall semester freshman year, you'll be working with your advisor yes. to plan out every semester therefore after, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, right. If I could add, I think one of the unique things we do at Sacred Heart is we pair you with an academic mentor that we feel, or you've indicated that to career path that you want to go into. So if you have an interest in exercise science, you'll be in our Intro to Exercise Science course, which is EX100. We have great faculty in there. In the fall, I think I've planned for seven sections, so we're trying to get the numbers down. Right now we're planning for 24. Um, we work in clinical skills within that course. Um, and then your faculty member in that course teaching you um, is a great source of information. So. You know, we, we don't like when students decide against exercise science, but we're happy because you found out you don't want to do exercise science. So um, I think that's one of the good things that we do at Sacred Heart is we, we try to get you in a path that you've indicated you want, but you're not fixed to that path. So the courses that you'll end up taking are all going to move you towards your graduation, even if you switch to business or communication disorders or anything else. All right. Thank you, Matt. Uh, question now for speech language pathology. Uh, a, the question is, uh, I received a, a seat for the accelerated option for speech language pathology. What are the requirements to maintain the seat uh, in terms of GPA uh, or any uh, postgraduate exam, GRE, that they may have to take? 
Sure, so you have to maintain um, a GPA, I believe, of a 3.3 throughout um, your time here. Um, and what was the other? Um, what to, other, may, uh, do, as far as uh, GRE exam or anything else that may pertain to maintaining um, the seat? So I don't um, remember the exact GRE number, but um, I think you can find that easily on the admissions website. Yes. Um, the main thing is really maintaining your GPA and maintaining sort of being engaged in the program um, in order to get the, the most out of it. I can add a little bit more to okay. that too, Rob. I uh, spent many years working here at Sacred Heart University, actually in our graduate admissions office as well. Um, so we work with a number of candidates who transition for our undergraduate, from our undergraduate programs to our graduate programs. It's a very streamlined process for those of you who are pre-admitted as freshmen, as long as you maintain the academic criteria for the program. Uh, we work, the, the staff in graduate admissions works with you, your advisors work with you, they ensure that you're meeting all the necessary requirements to make that transition. Uh, the GRE exam specifically is used as an assessment tool for your performance in the program. Um, so you won't, if you're pre-admitted to the program, it, it's, it, it, there's no minimum score required. It's just used simply for assessment to make sure that you're prepared and, and staying on a track that will well prepare you, especially as you uh, complete the graduate program and then sit for your licensure exam. Uh, we don't want your licensure exam to be the first time you actually sit for an exam. So the GRE is a nice preparation for that. Okay. Uh, question for physical therapy. Uh, can you discuss the differences between the 3 plus 3 and the 4 plus 3 uh, tracks for physical therapy? Certainly. So uh, students have the option of completing their undergraduate degree in either three years or four years. The physical therapy program itself is unchanged. The PT program, the graduate program in physical therapy is three years in length regardless. Um, so it's really the undergraduate side that is different. So it's either you're uh, completing your undergraduate degree in three years, which would, similar to the OT program, require winter and or summer classes. Uh, and then once you complete your undergraduate, you transition into the PT program. Many of our students who are tracking towards physical therapy select an undergraduate degree in exercise science. So um, actually to piggyback off of what Matt was saying earlier, uh, those students who are exercise science undergraduate students who are tracking to physical therapy often have an academic advisor who's in the physical therapy program. So we have an opportunity to um, meet students that are tracking towards physical therapy as early as their sophomore year uh, of undergrad. So it's a nice way to transition students from the undergrad into the graduate program. And, and if I could add the same for ahead. occupational yep. therapy, just in terms of those that indicate early on in the exercise science track, if you're interested in occupational therapy, uh, the faculty of the OT program um, are available for advising also. Okay. And the one thing I'd add to that, because I work with a lot of students that are, you know, they, I'm 3 plus 3 or I'm 4 plus 3, that's really a personal decision between yourself and your family moving forward. It's obviously a financial decision, but I'd almost like wish we get rid of the accelerated tagline. I think higher education has changed and kids are going through at different speeds. Many of you probably sitting there have lots of college credit. So for a lot of my students that are 3 plus 3, it doesn't really feel as much accelerated because they're coming in with so many credits. So again, it's the path that you want to take. When you come here, no one knows if you're a 3 plus 3 or a 4 plus 3. Um, there's no tag next to you in the system. So it really is for you to figure out how well you adapt to college life. You may do really well and it makes sense for you. You will have to do summer class. So that's, there's no option on that. You'll have to take anatomy 1 and 2 at home. That could be at a community college. It could be at a four-year school. Again, I think what Sacred Heart's done really well is we've positioned ourselves to handle these accelerated tracks, and it's given you, the student, more flexibility to do that. Uh, and uh, to go back to physical therapy, can you talk about uh, the majors that a student can, can select uh, in uh, preparing for the um, physical therapy program, and then we can cross that with the occupational therapy program as well. Sure thing. So students are welcome to select any undergraduate major if they're tracking towards physical therapy. Um, many of our students choose to be an exercise science undergraduate major purely because there's a lot of overlap between exercise science and what physical therapists do. So if you have an interest in PT, often you have an interest in exercise. Um, however, students can have an undergraduate degree in health science, health science. <laughs> <laughs> or biology or psychology yes. or business for that matter. Yes. Um, 
what we require is that you have um, taken the required prerequisite courses, as we consider those to be the, the foundational um, course, courses that prepare you for the graduate program in physical therapy. And I could add that that's the same for occupational therapy. So again, just thinking in terms of um, your preparedness for the program and moving forward, there are prerequisite courses. You'll find those online. Um, but again, in terms of your undergrad major, it can be biology, it can be exercise science, health science. Um, and again, so long as you have the prerequisite requirements, you are more than welcome to join us in our program. We'd be happy to have you. Now, with that said, a shameless plug for our undergraduate <laughs> podcast, uh, you certainly can major in anything. We think it makes sense to major in something in the health professions as an undergrad because they align very closely with what you want to do moving forward. So it's an opportunity to enhance your undergraduate learning days. You'll probably find more enjoyment in them. And then when you become a DPT or an occupational therapy, um, you can you could benefit from the undergraduate experience, specifically from exercise science you can become accredited as a certified strength and conditioning coach or a clinical exercise physiologist. Those are credentials that you keep with you yourself for the remainder of your clinical career. So one of the questions that uh, we've seen a couple times today is talking about uh, the, uh, the fact that, you know, while we're doing things virtually, will you be able to see this facility virtually? And that is something that we are currently working on. Uh, so we hope to, over the next couple of weeks, provide you uh, with a virtual tour option of the Center for Healthcare Education for those of you that have not been able uh, to make it to see this facility uh, in your time at looking at Sacred Heart. So we will be providing that to you uh, in some format over the next few weeks. But I do want to talk a little bit about, and this is going to be open to everybody here, is um, your connection to this uh, facility and what you think that this facility, since it's been open in 2017, has provided to our students. Um, in uh, the college of health profession. So anybody would like to jump on that? Yeah. We'll start up here, okay. Sure, so in the field of speech pathology, we have a beautiful lab um, where our clients actually come to receive speech services. Um, the lab has individual, six individual rooms for individual therapy that are equipped with cameras and microphones so your supervisor doesn't actually have to be in there with you, but they're supporting you and watching you and being able to give you support and feedback. Um, whether it be written that you read after or whatever it might be, and they're not sort of hovering, because I know that could be intimidating sometimes. Um, the other thing that is in those labs is all of the test uh, tests that we need for uh, children to test children and to test adults um, with speech and communication disorder needs. So it really is a great, um, that's one of the highlights, I think, of the speech program here. Anybody else? Sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd love to brag about our building. <laughs> um, natural light, first of all, oh, which yeah, is wonderful. Yes. Totally. Um, always important, especially in the, in the winter. Uh, we, in the physical therapy program, use three, primarily three lab spaces here in the building. We have a lab um, specifically for our musculoskeletal coursework where students learn to examine and treat individuals who have musculoskeletal conditions. We have a neuro and cardio lab where students learn uh, how to work with patients with neurologic or cardiac conditions, um, patients perhaps who have difficulty with uh, functional mobility, things like rolling or sitting or standing and walking. And we also have a human anatomy lab where we have, I believe it's six human specimens that we use throughout the curriculum. Um, so students have tremendous access to all of these resources throughout the entire curriculum. Um, we pretty much have any piece of equipment that we could potentially dream of having. We basically have it here. Um, so students have the opportunity to see um, high-end high technology that can really serve as an adjunct to the therapy services that we provide. In addition to training our students how to use some very uh, rudimentary skills like the power of observation and the power of handling skills in um, the, the ability to help patients recover function. And if I could add, sorry, um, if I could add, having taught in a number of universities in the Boston area, I would say that Sacred Heart has the most advanced teaching technology with respect to simulation. Mm -hmm. We have the cadaver lab, but we also have an inanimage table, and if you don't know what that is, it's a 3D representation of the human body, so there will be an, a specimen that would be in our cadaver lab that has now been recreated through uh, 3D imaging so that you can actually look at different layers of the body 
So if you're studying the heart, we could remove all of the skin, and literally the heart is there in front of you and you can see its functionality. And that's an amazing technology because we all know that students have different styles of learning. And so some are more hands-on, some do better with different types of visual approaches. We also, the faculty are very versed in online learning, so you have an opportunity to have your lectures recorded and you can play back as many times as you want. So I think there's an opportunity to be able to address all learning styles within this particular institution. And I would just say in terms of lab space for occupational therapy, we primarily teach in three larger spaces. Um, on the ground level, we have a pediatric lab and a sensory integration lab. So again, state of the art equipment, everything that one would need in terms of the development of your skills to engage in assessment and interventions for children. Um, up on the third floor we have the tabletop lab, so hands-on skills in terms of um, maybe understanding the nature of activities, activity analysis, um, splinting, um, again a, a lot of different courses are delivered in the tabletop space. And then we also have a fully um, equipped home suite, so again working with individuals around, um, again, transfers for bathrooms, living space, preparing a meal, um, laundry, everything. Uh, we also have another space which is called the driving simulator um, space and with this particular um, space we have a driving simulator so for evaluation and designing driving interventions for people who want to return to driving. Uh, we do a lot of faculty run clinics and one is the driving clinic, um, also part of the neuro clinic. Um, and we do a lot of service learning, people from the community coming in to work with faculty and students in these teaching spaces. If I could add holistically, I've been here 11 years and um, I'm very proud of the lab that we have here. It's 4,400 square feet. We're all sort of bragging about our labs, which uh, <laughs> they are amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, for me, the, I think the best part about this space, and kudos to the architects who developed it and designed it, is it, the openness. And yes. you guys are all sitting there because you want to be clinicians and you want to serve and help people. I think when the students step on campus, at least for me, and I come in this building, you really feel like this is the place to be trained to become a clinician. Mm -hmm. it's so exciting for me. I walked by the lab the other day. I see Sharon's teaching. So it's a lot of, it's very open. I see my old students are in the PT labs. Um, it, it's just a great place to teach. And I think for a student, it's really exciting. And you'll see, um, you know, all walks and shades of the health professions. I think we're the only state in Connecticut with PT, OT, and speech. I don't know if that's still true. Mm -hmm. Nurses are up on the third floor. I mean, everyone, all the students here, they're training to be clinicians. So not only are you going to be exposed to all that, you'll probably make collaborations and, and networking opportunities moving forward in your future career. So the space is awesome. Um, our, our old space was terrible, and I think we still have great <laughs> teachers there. So I think we're, we're adapting as teachers to, to make use of this space more. But I think what the building has done, at least for me, is it it's shown the possibility of, of connectedness, and I think we can still get better there. Um, I can go on and on, but yeah. for me, that's, the, and the foods are very good here. So <laughs> uh, we're gonna actually stay with uh, Dr. Moran. Uh, a question about exercise science. What types of careers are available for uh, study in exercise science? Well, the majority of our students will go on to graduate school. That's sort of the nature of the beast now with higher education. So over 90% of our students will move on. 70% stay within physical therapy. However, as I mentioned earlier, there are credentials that we push our students to take. Uh, those are clinical exercise physiology and then certified strength and conditioning. So the major career paths when our students do go out into the workforce are going to be in those two domains. Um, cardiac rehabilitation being the most clinically oriented one. And we have courses that are devoted towards preparing students for careers in those, um, in those domains, and then certified strength and conditioning coach. Those are for students that are definitely interested in athletic performance, sports science, and we're preparing our students through internship programs, so they'll be able to get experience. And that's a field where you really do need the internship experience. You have to network. Um, it's beyond just having a resume. It's, it's really who you know, and we're fortunate. We have one of the best strength and conditioning. Um, he's a doctoral trained, Dr. Chris Tabor. You can look him up, and he um, does a lot of research in the area. He knows a lot of individuals, and he's placing all of our students right now. So those are the two main areas. There are other areas, corporate fitness, um, but like I said earlier, the majority of our students are moving on for graduate work. I know a lot of you are uh, wondering where some of this information that we're talking about this morning can be found, and you certainly can look at our website, so uh, www.sacredheart.com 
www.edu, uh, where you'll be able to uh, filter by academics uh, and then the College of Health Professions uh, once you get into the, the website. And then you'll be able to find uh, full information about all the majors, both undergraduate and graduate, uh, as well as some very uh, wonderfully developed videos uh, that correspond to many of these programs. So feel free to uh, review the, uh, the website today while you're watching us or afterwards so you can get some of this information. And again, we will be sending this out to you in uh, multi-dimensional formats, virtual, uh, text over the next uh, few weeks uh, as we continue to engage uh, this class. Uh, we are halfway through our chat uh, this morning. Uh, once again, my name is Rob Gilmore. I'm the Director of Campus Experience in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. And it is our pleasure to welcome you, the Class of 2024, and your parents and your families with us this morning as we highlight the College of Health Professions. And we are certainly uh, glad that we we're able to connect with you in some way or another, uh, whether or not be on campus, but now uh, through uh, your mobile phones, your computers uh, in this age that we're in. Uh, and you know, we are very lucky here at Sacred Heart to have the technology available to uh, have this live stream with you this morning. I'm joined w uh, by Pam Pillow, the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Sacred Heart, uh, who uh, has overseen the process of bringing you into the university, as well as several uh, staff uh, excuse me, faculty and the Dean of the College of Health Professions. We're going to have everybody introduce themselves to you one more time, just for those of you who may have come in late, so you can get to see who you're talking to, and then we're gonna ask that you continue to send in your questions as we go through this last half hour of our chat this morning. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Kristen Schweizer. I'm Clinical Assistant Professor and Associate Director of Clinical Education in the Physical Therapy Program. Hello, I'm Dr. Matthew Moran, the Director of Undergraduate Exercise Science and the Head of Biomechanical Testing in our Pioneer Performance Center. Hello, I'm Dr. Sharon McCluskey. I am the Interim Chair and Program Director of the Occupational Therapy Program, Clinical Assistant Professor here at Sacred Heart. Good morning. I'm Dr. Maura Everson. I'm Dean of the College of Health Professions and I'm a Professor of Physical Therapy and of Public Health. Good morning, my name is Marta Kordkowska. I'm the Clinical Assistant Professor in Speech-Language Pathology or Communication Disorders. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Winkert. I'm an Academic Advisor in our Health Science Program. And I'm Pam Pillow, Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions, offering my sincere congratulations to all of you. Okay, so we're gonna get right back into your questions. Uh, one question that we've been seeing popping up uh, multiple times this morning is about our physician assistance program. Uh, and I'm gonna start off with Pam on this to talk to you a little bit about uh, the uh, nuances that surround our PA program here at Sacred Heart. Sure, so our PA program here is uh, a graduate program. Uh, it's a program that all students uh, apply to as graduate students. It's actually housed down in Stanford. It is attached to Stanford Hospital. Uh, in a, a location we call the Tandon Center, so our students have full access to a lot of clinical opportunities. It is a two-year graduate program, but a number of uh, the, the majors um, here at Sacred, at Sacred Heart, particularly health science, exercise science, do f um, serve as a feed into that graduate program. Um, Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about undergrads? Sure, so, yeah. well, let me talk about advising, too. Yeah. So, in addition to advising, um, when it comes to your undergrad, but also if you decide you want to go on to graduate school, specifically in the physician studies, we also have pre-health advisors. Right. So our pre-health advisor specifically is Dr. Worley in our biology department, um, who you would meet with in addition to your normal advisor, who's going to help you go through all the classes that you need in sequence, as well as go through graduate school. She offers courses, um, one credit in the fall and in the spring, depending on what your class standing is and she has guest uh, lectures from different discipline, disciplines um, to go over. And uh, so I would always encourage my students um, to register for those because any help, any you know, information they can get um, while you're here would be uh, wonderful to have. Um, so definitely, in addition to your regular advisor, you should also uh, meet with your pre-health advisor as well. Great. So one of the... Um misconceptions for some students when they're coming into Sacred Heart is that they want to go on a health track uh, but they want to end up in medical school uh, mm -hmm. and I know we have the connotation here of the College of Health Professions um, and while the pre-health advising program isn't necessarily embedded in this college 
there is a lot of crossover with some of the programs uh, that you'll be able to take your classes or major in as you prepare. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, learn more about the pre-health advising program at Sacred Heart to prepare you for medical school, dental school, veterinary school, that information can be found within the College of Arts and Sciences website page at sacredheart.edu. So you can see the, uh, the planning process that would go into getting you ready to uh, prepare for graduate school or medical school at that time. Uh, next question that we're going to come to is, uh, for again, for the occupational therapy program. Uh, what classes do you normally take in freshman year in preparation for the OT program? So in terms of the freshman classes, again, um, when you enter that first semester, you'll have a range of courses. And again, you need to be thinking about your basic sciences. So thinking about um, biology, anatomy, physiology, moving forward, um, you also need to begin to think about other courses under psychology. Um, so in that first year, with your advisor, you will enter onto a track. So again, for health science or for exercise science, um, again, we need a blend of both your sciences starting out as well as your psychology lifespan development type courses. Okay. Uh, next question, I'm going to hopefully uh, give this to uh, Dean uh, Everson. Okay. Um, how would you compare Sacred Heart University's uh, public health program uh, to other universities? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, Sacred Heart's public health program is really focused on population health. And that's a very large topic as uh, we're in the, the state right now of, of the world with respect to the pandemic. Uh, population health is something that um, engages the epidemiology of diseases across a span. There's a lot of flexibility with a degree in population health. You could be working in a public health sector. So for the Department of Public Health, let's say in Connecticut or another state, uh, you could be working with community services and helping them to develop uh, education programs in order to inform older adults or younger adults. Um, so it could be something like fall risk assessment or improving physical activity within a population. Um, it really has a lot of latitude. Um, I actually have, uh, have a degree in public health, a doctoral degree in public health, and um, I really find that it's a wonderful complement to many of the health professions and does give you a great deal of latitude as you're looking at careers in the future. Okay. Uh, next question for uh, speech language pathology. Uh, what uh, courses uh, do you take uh, at the undergrad level to prepare for speech language pathology and how rigorous is the undergraduate program? So I think that the field of speech pathology is, I think health professions in general is pretty rigorous um, because there's a lot of basic science that's involved. You are well prepared for a graduate degree in at both Sacred Heart or elsewhere. Um, Intro to communication disorders, neuro, which is something that I teach, anatomy and physiology, uh, phonetics. You you take a slew of classes that prepare you really well for the next steps um, in getting a graduate degree and ultimately licensure as a speech language pathologist. And the other thing that you can experience is a lot of observations from graduate students treating clinical um, clinical populations and really a lot of access to your professors who will mentor you and um, sort of tell you what it's like in the real world. Okay, and can you just touch a little bit, about, I know we talked about it at the beginning of the hour, but um, the audiology suite we have here yes. and how That's students great. can interact with that. Uh, so the um, facility, I mean, is, is amazing. So the audiology suite is led by Dr. Jamie Murado. Um, she actually sees clients in the audiology suite, so you would also have an opportunity to observe there as an undergraduate. Um, she has the audiology booth, um, she does assessments, fits hearing aids, um, it's quite an amazing um, space. It's on our first floor and then we also, I didn't mention earlier, we have simulation equipment for fees for fibroendoscopic mm -hmm. evaluation of the swallow as well as our aphasia area. Okay, very good. Um, talking a little bit about clinicals now uh, in your different areas, uh, when can students start clinicals? Uh, and what uh, type of um, schedule would the clinicals be on until uh, they complete graduation requirements here? Mm -hmm. Let's start with Kristen. Yep, sure. So students in the physical therapy program have four required uh, clinical experiences for a total of 38 weeks. The first one happens at the end of the first year of the doctoral program, so the first summer, that's eight weeks in length. And then the final year of the program is three 10-week long clinicals. Students, um, 
are required to have a clinical in outpatient musculoskeletal, one in rehab, one in a hospital-based acute care, and then a fourth, with, which is a choice rotation, where students can explore a specialty practice area like women's health, oncology, pediatrics, or dive a little bit deeper into one of the required rotations. Um, we are fortunate we have um, clinical contracts with uh, clinical sites across the country. We have probably about 700 clinical sites that we use uh, across the United States. So uh, it's a pretty robust program and we encourage quite a range of diversity of experiences for our students. In exercise science, we have a capstone experience in the senior year which can be met um, several different ways. One of which is through clinical experience and we're fortunate to have three unique experiences um, here, two at Sacred Heart and one where you go out into the community. Those aligning with corporate fitness, we have a clinical rotation within our Pioneer Performance Center where we see clients here in this building. And then we have another clinical rotation in cardiac rehabilitation. For those students that um, may be engaged more within the exercise science and, and pursuing um, a graduate degree, we have independent research opportunities. And um, we just had a, a student actually just ad, um, admitted to a PhD program at University of Florida in rehabilitation um, neuroscience. So we're excited yes. about that. So you have the opportunity to do research as well. Um, for those who really know what you want to do, um, internships are possible. I mentioned those earlier with strength and conditioning. So occupational therapy is a full-time two-year graduate program. And in the first semester, um, again, that's your foundational courses. The following um, three academic semesters, you have um, opportunities for what's called level one fieldwork. Um, the level one fieldwork experiences take place in both traditional and non-traditional settings. Um, most of them are local to Sacred Heart in, the, in our local communities or certainly within Connecticut. Um, and again, those experiences will be in settings which require um, OT um, in both mental health, phys dis, and also pediatric settings. Um, the last two semesters of the two years are your full-time 12-week um, experiences you have to 24 weeks are required by our accreditor ACOAT um, and those experiences can be anywhere in the United States again we have a couple of hundred um, agreements with different um, facilities and um, all of those experience will be in traditional um, occupational therapy type settings again it can be um, phys dis, mental health or pediatrics and in, the field, yep, in the field of speech language pathology, um, as an undergrad, you observe for 25 hours. And as a graduate student, you get 375 hours of hands-on experience. So in your first year, that would be in the community, at a skilled nursing facility, or at a school, um, with a lot of hands-on supervision and a lot of assistance from your professors and support, or in our aphasia clinic. Um, and then in your second year and in the summer you might go out to um, a hospital, acute rehab, uh, skilled nursing facility, outpatient, um, early intervention, private practice, any of the fields that speech language pathologists practice in and we do a survey so you're really geared towards what you want to do or that's the majority of your experience but you do get experience in all the other fields as well to make sure that you solidify with what, where your heart is and what you want to do. Can I just add, yeah. um, we, at Sacred Heart we have the first Masters in Athletic Training program and in that program we actually work with uh, either school-based athletics at the high school level or at the collegiate level. You have an opportunity to work abroad at the professional level as well. So that's a great opportunity if you believe that you're somebody that's really interested in athletics and sports. Um, and in the public health, as I mentioned earlier, our master's in public health, we also have a master's in health informatics. And if you don't know what that is, um, health informatics is a degree whereby you can help hospitals to ensure quality care delivery within the hospital care system. So getting data from electronic medical records, helping clinicians determine whether or not patients have good outcomes. So you're kind of like the, the man behind the curtain or woman <laughs> behind the curtain, helping to inform healthcare delivery. So those are really exciting opportunities to be working either within a hospital system or to be working within the community at large. Thank you, Dean Everson. And that was, my next thing was gonna be talking about athletic training, which is one program we haven't touched on yet today, but uh, it's a fantastic program here, uh, and uh, students do have hands-on 
uh, opportunities, as you said, at the high school level, the collegiate level, and the professional level. Uh, one of my former students actually interned with the New England Patriots uh, last summer. Uh, he is now uh, completing some work uh, in Florida as well. Uh, so uh, wherever your heart will take you in this program, there the opportunities are there for you. Um, one of the things that uh, we've seen a couple questions on today is uh, about study abroad options, uh, which is an important part to a lot of students uh, and having the ability uh, to use the global classroom towards your advantage either at the undergraduate or graduate level. Uh, Sacred Heart itself offers a wide range of study abroad programs. Uh, both uh, at our own campuses and our uh, uh, agreement campuses across the world. Sacred Heart owns two campuses in Europe, one being in Luxembourg, the other one being in Dingle, Ireland. Uh, Dingle being the more popular for most majors to go to. Uh, and then we also have uh, correlation agreements with over 30 uh, colleges uh, uh, in 60 programs around the world that you can choose from. Uh, and so uh, that is an opportunity for our students to use uh, the global classroom. But we'll talk a little bit about uh, the program specific, uh, specifications within the College of Health Professions, not just for study abroad, but also, also for academic immersion uh, that you may be doing as a mission trip uh, during uh, your time here as well. In the physical therapy program, students have an opportunity to participate in a service learning trip to Guatemala, where they provide physical, th where the students provide physical therapy services uh, to an underserved population in Antigua, Guatemala. They also, we also offer a an elective course in Luxembourg uh, called Comparative Healthcare Systems, where students have an opportunity to compare the United States healthcare delivery system to the healthcare systems of those throughout Europe. Um, those are the two that are coming to mind right now. Guatemala? Uh, yeah, Guatemala yeah. and Luxembourg. For occupational therapy, we have a number of global um, experiences, service learning experience. So again, in terms of an interprofessional experience with um, OT, PT, and speech in Guatemala. But the occupational therapy students also have been afforded um, opportunities to go to Haiti um, and to go to Romania and to an orphanage for children and a special ed school. We also take our students out to the reservation in South Dakota to work with the Lakota people. Um, so we have a number of different um, opportunities for occupational therapy students to engage with communities and populations in a number of different places. And then in Guatemala, speech language pathologists go um, to help fit hearing aids. So um, again, Dr. Mato leads that effort on the speech pathology front. Um, and then in Ireland, there, um, Ellen Masucci and Dr. Morado are attempting to launch a program for us to go to Ireland as well. Okay. Yeah, for academic immersion at the undergraduate level, we have an exercise science class in late spring in Dingle, Ireland. It's hands down my best experience <laughs> here at Sega Heart. I found out I'm not Dr. Moran over there, I'm Dr. Morin, Morin. as my Irish exactly. colleague. Yes. <laughs> There's Moran gas stations over there, so I was like, oh, good. Yes, yes. Uh, so How you say it's, it. a, it's a very, very popular class. Kids love taking it. And it, for, if you're sitting there and you're not sure about going fully abroad, obviously crazy times, this is a, it's a great stepping stone if you've never been overseas, or even if you have, it's a, it's a very safe experience. Kids love it. It's an amazing place. Dingle is, I love it. I look forward to going back myself. Grown um, kids love it too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. So, and it's a great course. Um, we study the Irish sports, which uh, in particular, we spent a lot of time learning about Gaelic football. And then we take what you've learned over here and we apply it um, to the sport of Gaelic football. So um, if you're looking for sort of something in between, that is a great thing to do as an undergrad. So in terms of cultural competence, we also work with communities in our local area. So for example, the Haitian community or persons from Rwanda. Um, so we have other opportunities to engage globally and to connect with people who, um, again, are from all parts of the globe. Um, and you can do that locally. Um, if again in terms of travel that that would be something you're not so sure you want to try. All, all are open. <laughs> Matt, you have a oh, And a lot of our students in health science, um, I've never been to Dingle, Ireland, but um, I, could get, I could hear all the stories from my advisees, even some where they said that it was life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I think it would be a great opportunity for me to go one day. But, That's right. Um, <laughs> but I love hearing their stories. I always want, when they come back, um, we, um, I have them sit in my office for a while. And we just talk about it because I really want to know the experiences they have um, outside of the classroom here and into a classroom 
um, somewhere else because there is a big difference between being here in the United States in the traditional classroom than being out there and you get to go sure. and roam around the area and kind of learn things um, first you know first perspective rather than just hearing from others or seeing it on video um, we also have students um, Australia is becoming very popular and also we have um, like a two-week immersion opportunity in India as well um, which students take you all over the world yeah. mm -hmm. yes um, one of the things that's uh, a focus of the College of Health Professions in all areas is uh, what is known as problem-based uh, problem learning. Uh, and that is uh, identified in a lot of the classroom um, space and technology that you would see here in the, uh, the Center for Healthcare Education in the College of Health Professions. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about the faculty about uh, PBL or problem-based uh, learning and how you address that uh, in your curriculum. Sure thing. Uh, so in the physical therapy program, throughout the entire didactic curriculum, uh, the foundational uh, curricular model that we use is problem-based learning. So students meet twice a week in small groups of six or seven students led by a facilitator, and that facilitator is a physical therapist in the community. And what happens is the students get a patient case, so it might be a patient that's had a stroke. And the students at that time don't understand what a stroke is, and they don't know what regions of the brain control what functions. And so as they're reading through the patient case, they identify what they know and what they need to know. They then divide up that information amongst the six or seven of them. They go home and research it and come back and teach each other what they've learned. Again, this is all guided by the facilitator. And then when they come to class, we uh, have what's called a large group discussion. So it's uh, our version of a lecture that's a more facilitated discussion among the students. Um, through this model, we've definitely seen that students right out of the gate are learning how to think like a physical therapist. They're learning what questions to ask, where to go to get their information, and then how to apply it to a patient case. They're also learning to develop their uh, communication and teaching skills, which as clinicians of all kinds, we're, we're educators at heart. Uh, and so they're learning how to adapt their communication and education delivery uh, to the needs of different types of learners, because that's what our patients are. Uh, so it really uh, facilitates a seamless transition into clinical practice. Um, I would just add, Kristen's done a very good description of exactly what happens also in occupational therapy in terms of our problem-based learning approach. I will say, um, to kind of piggyback on that, in terms of teaching with PBL, we've also moved a little bit into TBL, which is similar, but it does require small group preparation and, again, um, thinking about learning issues and working collaboratively as a group. We, we really do emphasize experiential learning, active and collaborative learning through PBL and TBL um, together. Yeah. And I would just add that um, in the coming year, as you enter campus, we are going to be developing a small seminar for the health professions that will help adjust um, your learning style to this format of, of learning. It's a little bit different and sometimes it seems a little daunting, but honestly, many students feel very comfortable and really enjoy the opportunity of the small group, close interaction, and really close interaction with your faculty member who serves as a facilitator within that course. Now one of the things that many of you sitting uh, watching today uh, are wondering is about your pre-acceptance, if you've been pre-accepted to one of our graduate programs within the College of Health Professions. I'm going to turn it over to Pam for a little bit to talk about uh, what your next steps are if you have been pre-accepted and what you should be thinking about at the undergrad level. Wonderful. Well first, congratulations if, congratulations if you've received pre-acceptance to a graduate program because those standards are quite high for our entering class, so um, that's quite an achievement. Uh, your next step is, is truly, um, obviously, once you attend orientation, get your class schedule uh, for freshman year, stay in close contact with your academic advisor. Um, that's most important. You're going to want to um, understand the academic criteria in order to maintain your seat in, with that pre-acceptance. That, that seat is yours. Um, so you want to just make sure that you're maintaining uh, your course schedule, your, your, your academic standards, your GPA, and working in close advisement with your advisor. Um, the Office of Graduate Admissions is there for you. They will help with your formal transition and matriculation into the graduate portion of the degree. Um, but, you know, your, your advisors, there's a, a large support team here for you um, to continue you on that track to the graduate study. Okay. Um, question now coming in uh, is, uh, we're going to go to Dr. Moran. Um, 
how well suited is the exercise science program if your desired career path is chiropractic? We see we have had students go on to a career in uh, as a chiropractor. Um, it's it's a relatively small number. However, when you think about what does a chiropractor do in terms of looking at the body musculoskeletally, in terms of alignment, um, understanding um, length tension relationships of muscles, skeletal arrangements of joints, that's really what we we teach you in exercise science. So I can't speak specifically because I'm not a chiropractor and I don't work with folks in that regard. However, I think there's a natural affinity of the material that we teach you would carry over and, and prepare you very well for a career as a chiropractor. And as I've mentioned before, we have a few students that have moved on. In particular, we actually have a chiropractor as one of our adjunct faculty he teaches our EX270 course. So if you want to come here and, and think that's the, the path you would take, you would absolutely um, take Dr. Lander's course and presumably you'd even do an internship under him as well. And he would be an informal advisor for you. Okay. Um, can some, uh, some of you talk a little bit more about your specific clinical placements? Where, what facilities are we in? What communities are we in? Uh, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Uh, so in the physical therapy program, I'll give you a smattering, just as an example. <laughs> uh, here in Connecticut, we have uh, relationships with the Yale New Haven Hospital System, uh, the Hartford Hospital System, in New York, NYU, New York Presbyterian, um, the Northwell system in New Jersey, the Atlantic Health and Hackensack systems for hospitals, uh, for rehabs, uh, Gaylord, Burke Rehab, Kessler, um, gosh, uh, Cardinal Hill, Stanford Hospital, um, pretty much every major rehab facility in the region for sure, and certainly many throughout the United States. Um, for specialty areas, um, MD Anderson Cancer Hospital and um, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Hospital. Uh, we have affiliations with Texas Children's Hospital, the San Francisco Giants, a number of Air Force bases across the country, so Keesler Air Force Base, Travis Air Force Base, uh, which is in California, Keesler's in Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, Exos, which uh, does some uh, sports training, has a number of sports training facilities across the country. Gosh, um, the list goes on and on, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I'll, stop I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Well, I can jump in in terms of mm -hmm. occupational therapy, in terms of rehabilitation hospitals, all that Kristen mentioned, Just also OT, yeah. uh, you know, and speech. We all, we all have agreements with these particular placements. Um, occupational therapy is not on Air Force bases, mm -hmm. though. Um, but having said that, occupational therapy students, we have some very good um, site affiliations with public schools, and again, public schools districts across the United States. Um, we also have um, affiliations with psychiatric settings, both community-based settings and psychiatric hospitals, um, again, within Connecticut and across the United States. I'm trying to think what else. But. And I would say you guys are all are going to be undergraduates soon, so at the undergraduate level, I, there's two really unique things we have here. Um, one's the audiology clinic, which um, is amazing, and you get an opportunity to see clients right here. You don't have to yes. go anywhere. And then the Pioneer Performance Center, which is near to my heart because I've been working on it for 10 years. And it's an amazing um, center that we're continuing to grow. I think it actually what makes, makes our program one of the best, if not the best, in New England. Um, we see a range of clients. Last week we had a 352 miler come in for a gait analysis. Um, we have individual stroke, in, stroke, stroke patients who come in to use our Alter G. Um, so that's really growing, and we hope to continue to grow that. So that's something where, even as a sophomore here, you'd have opportunities to um, to work in the Pioneer Performance Center. I was right. just going to, sorry, just okay. add in terms of level one field work, again, in terms of faculty practice, um, we have a neurogenic clinic, a stroke clinic, um, the driving simulator clinic. Uh, we run a group um, Monday night social for individuals with intellectual disabilities. So there's opportunities to have your level one field works here on site at the College of Health Professions. And then just as an aside, you can also, I mean, in speech, we also have all of the rehab hospitals and the clinics on campus, but we also have opportunities if you have a relationship somewhere and you want to develop that relationship and do a practicum there, we have a system in place to, to kind of make that happen for you. Uh, and with that, we're going to begin to wrap up uh, this morning. 
Uh, we have had uh, several hundred questions come through. Uh, we were not able to get to all of them, but we will uh, be putting this uh, chat into an outlet where we will be able to answer all those questions for you over the coming days because we want to provide as much information to you as possible. Uh, like I said at the beginning and in the middle of our chat today, we are going to be communicating with all of you, uh, both the admitted students for the class of 2024 as well as uh, your parents uh, on uh, how we are going to engage you virtually uh, over the next few weeks until we have a better estimate of when we can get you back on campus. Uh, but we will be providing more of these chats uh, and videos to you so that you're well prepared to look at Sacred Heart and making your decision uh, on why uh, you have uh, the ability to become a pioneer coming this fall. Uh, we are going to also ask that you continue to stay with us through our social media accounts, through our, our admitted student website, which is welcome.sacredheart.edu. Through that website, you're going to be able to see uh, different uh, profiles of a lot of our students. You're going to be able to engage with different areas of the university and get access to our admitted student Facebook group, which we're at this point asking all admitted students to be in the admitted student Facebook group. There's going to be a lot of information flowing through there over the next few weeks. So we want to make sure that you have uh, access to that so you can get those uh, important updates. Uh, for those of you who are considering still uh, depositing to Sacred Heart, which I know is all of you watching right now, uh, you can deposit on our website at sacredheart.edu slash deposit. Uh, and uh, from all of us here uh, in the undergraduate admissions office, Pam and myself, uh, Dr. Uh, Maura Everson, the Dean of the College of Health Professions, our faculty here and our students who wish they could be here but are cheering you on from afar, uh, we are certainly glad that you were able to join us. And from all of us, we wish you the best uh, of luck today. Uh, as we go through uh, this next series of events at the university and we will be in contact with you over the next coming weeks uh, to engage you a little bit more but from all of us here in the Center for Healthcare Education at Sacred Heart University have a wonderful day. Bye, Bye everybody.